Malibu soaked, but largely unscathed. The cleanup underway from days of rain. Clearing the way to rebuild the extensions and incentives being offered to Woolsey fire victims. And delayed by the government shutdown, President Trump is about to address the nation. What to watch for in his State of the Union address. Newsday's 32 at 5 starts now. Mud on the roads and beaches washed away as the storm ends, the cleanup begins. Good evening, I'm Emily Tensor. And I'm Josie Leonetti. Welcome to the Tuesday night edition of News Waves. After five days of rain, local roads and beaches are a mess. Some workers say it's the worst they've ever seen, and the cleanup could take months. News Waves 32 reporter John Michael Raj joins us live from Surfrider Beach with a look at what the storms left behind. John? because of recent rain, including also recent winds that have been whipping the sand away from the beach as well as flooding in Malibu Lagoon. He said that this erosion could last for up to three to four months. Hopefully it will get dealt with sooner than that. Back to you guys as it is. Thank you, John Michael. Drier skies this evening, but we sure got our fill of rain. Hannah joins us early with the rain totals and if any more rain is on the way. Hannah? Thank you, Josie. After a weekend full of rain, the satellite is finally clear. As you know, Malibu was hit with intense rain amounting to over two inches. Not only was it a very rainy weekend, but was a wet January overall. In January, Malibu received over three and a half inches of rain. That's way above the monthly average of only 1.2 inches. The rest of the week is expected to be dry, but there's a chance of rain this weekend and it's going to be chilly. I'll be back with your full forecast in about five minutes. Until then, back to you, Emily, at the desk. Thank you, Hannah. As the rain has cleared, it's allowing crews to start clearing damage from the Woolsey fire. Newswaves reporter Araceli Crescencio joins us live with the cleanup and the incentives being offered to homeowners for debris removal. Araceli. Thank you, Emily. This morning, the threat of rain prevented crews from starting demolitions but work is being prioritized for the Malibu High School and Point Dune communities. Officials started taking assessments of properties last week. Board member crews are knocking down chimneys, taking assessments, taking photos, and trying to identify any object that would prevent them from executing their tasks. The fire debris removal pro process is off to a slow start, but the goal is to have all properties who have opted in to the program finished by May. And with the deadline extension, fire victims now have until February 15 to make a decision on how to clear their property. Those who get in, uh, who opt into the debris removal program will be notified 24 to 48 hours in advance, and residents will have the opportunity to walk their property with crews before work begins and stay during the process. The latest data from the city of Malibu indicates that roughly 200 residents of Malibu have not taken action in regard to the fire debris removal program. A representative from LA County Public Works is available at Malibu City Hall Monday through Friday from 3 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. As the beginning of cleanup moves forward, the city of Malibu urges residents to do so and rebuild using sustainable products. Live from Malibu at Question Park for Newswaves 32, I'm Araceli Crescencio. In light of the recent Woolsey fire and heavy flooding, the homeless of Malibu can now expect some added help. Malibu is receiving a $76,000 grant to hire a housing navigator. The navigator will work with homeowners to create a permanent housing solution for homeless people. 
The grant was awarded through the LA County Homeless Initiative. The city has not yet announced who will take the position. And homelessness is on the agenda for the State of the City Address in Santa Monica tomorrow. The theme for their announcement is shaping a changing world. Santa Monica will have a panel of city officials and industry experts discussing the city's issues regarding homelessness, fire preparedness, and Santa Monica's economic future. More than 700 people are expected to be there tomorrow night at 5 p.m. From the city level to the national level, President Trump is set to speak to the nation in less than an hour in the annual State of the Union Address. News News reporter Lily Spiritos is here with what we can expect the president to talk about tonight. Lily? The State of the Union Address will be delivered at 6 p.m. our time. President Trump is expected to discuss bipartisanship, the border wall, foreign trade deals, North Korea, and his plan to end HIV by 2030. After the 35-day government shutdown, American citizens will wait to hear if the president mentions another shutdown or the possibility of entering into a state of national emergency over funding a border wall. Counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, says the president will possibly offer bipartisan solutions. This president has already signed into law major reforms like criminal justice reform and the opioid drug legislation last October that had overwhelming bipartisan support. In fact, every single Democrat who voted in the House and the Senate voted in favor of the drug legislation. So we know it's possible. We know that there are decidedly, Jim, nonpartisan issues that can bring about bipartisan solutions. This will be the first time Nancy Pelosi takes her position as a Speaker of the House, sitting behind the President during the address. Viewers can stream the State of the Union live at whitehouse.gov. Overall, the White House says Trump will outline a policy both parties can rally behind, and I'm really curious what those policies will be and I, what the reactions will be. Exactly. I feel like everybody's curious about what's going to be said with the shutdown and everything. Absolutely. I think people have been waiting a long time to just hear something, and it'll be, um, it'll be a very interesting event, and uh, it'll be interesting to hear him talk. The high viewership for sure. Thank yeah. you so much, Thank Lily. you. Students in the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District may be getting more sleep before school. Parent Carrie Davies has started a petition to move start times for Santa Monica and Malibu Middle and High Schools to 8.30 or later. This is only a 15 minute move, but parents say it could change a lot. The petition lists numerous reasons for a later start time, including students being more alert in class and an increase in academic performance. The petition currently has over 600 signatures. All aboard and all new attraction will soon be arriving at the Malibu Pier. Starting this month, a Navy ship will be anchored off Malibu Pier as a port to call. Hundreds of sailors will be brought onto the pier for shore leave. The ship will be docked for three days for people to come on and explore for free. The ship will arrive February 22nd through February 24th. So exciting. Absolutely. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a ship at Malibu Not Pier. Not so we'll definitely have to go and check it out. And a Navy ship too? Yeah. That's big. <laughs> Well, Mammoth clobbered by snow. This is a live look at it. The Mammoth, a mountain of snow that has a big part of the mountain shut down. Move over Amazon and Microsoft. The top honor given today to Apple. And Disneyland for models. Details on the new theme park Tyra Banks is opening in Santa Monica. I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you. She's a hugger. Give her a squeeze. <laughs> Help up the hand. Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. You're killing it, Jane. Well, Thomas, well, Thomas you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time.
Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. How could you not love him? Don't be overly alarmed by any loud booms you hear this week. It's just the Army. The Army began conducting training drills last night in the L.A. and Long Beach areas. Many residents in the areas near where the drills are taking place can expect to hear loud noises from the aircraft and weapon simulations. The drills are expected to last until Saturday. The topic of global warming is heating up at Malibu Planning Commission meetings. Malibu City Hall is assuming ocean levels will go up 18 inches. They are already using this assumption when approving beachfront construction plans. A contract engineer says houses need to be designed higher. The Planning Commission is basing this off of the increase of water levels in Santa Monica Bay. The State Coastal Commission says the high levels are from carbon emissions and pollution. So the levels are not from the rain that we all just got, it's from pollution, but yeah. from how much rain who knows maybe it was but it's clear now yeah we had so much rain we might see some later this week no, but gosh, no it's cold though it's, it's a, freezing. so much colder but nothing compared to what mammoth is That's experiencing true. right now yeah take a look at this here is a live view from the summit on mammoth mountain it's been almost whiteout conditions all day more than 10 feet of snow has fallen at the base of the mountain with winds reaching over 50 miles an hour there's even more snow up top the summit has almost 18 feet of snow. It is currently only six degrees on the mountain with a low of negative one degrees tonight. Despite the blizzard conditions, some trails are open, but the mountain website is advising extreme caution for all skiers and drivers. Here at home, it's not snowing, but temperatures here are much cooler than usual. Currently, surf conditions are choppy, which waves are expected to reach up to six feet. There is a beach hazard warning in effect for Los Angeles County until 4 p.m. tomorrow. Although waves are currently only between two and three feet, the rip currents are extra strong. With all the rain, the fire risk today is low, but will reach a moderate level tomorrow afternoon. It is currently 55 degrees in cloudy skies with winds moving at a moderate speed of 20 miles per hour. The humidity is at 47%. Grab an extra blanket tonight temperatures could drop as low as 38 degrees. Looking at our neighboring cities, the cooler temperatures continue. Thousand Oaks is at a 52 degrees, Agora Hills is at 51 degrees, Calabasas at 53 degrees, and Santa Monica at a warmer 56 degrees. Later this week, we may see high winds and a chance of rain. Tomorrow will be a high of 59 and a low of 41 with partially cloudy skies. Thursday and Friday will be mostly sunny with temperatures in the lower 60s. Thursday will be a high of 61 and a low of 47. And Saturday will be cooler with a high of 59 and a low of 47 and a chance of rain in the morning. So it's going to be low, 38 degrees, but would I you guys rather have it be cold or rainy? I'd rather have it be raining. It depends yeah. on the rain amount. Know. Like yeah. if it's really heavy rain. Especially I, when rain is like causing problems such as all those road closures. I definitely wouldn't true. prefer the rain. That's it's just true. It's so cold. I, I yeah. have a heated blanket. So I know. I know. I'm, I'm going to be in bed all night tonight. Up. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. of course. Thank you. Apple received a new title Tuesday, world's most valuable company. After an earnings bump Tuesday, Apple is worth more than $823 billion. This number makes Apple wor worth more valuable than any tech giant, including Microsoft, whose worth is close to $820 billion. Apple beats uh, Amazon as well. And Apple's shares are rapidly increasing, up almost 12% from last week. Move over Disneyland, Tyra Banks is opening her own theme park, Model Land. Model Land will be a 21,000 square foot attraction at the Santa Monica Place. The supermodel announced the plans on her Instagram, calling it a place where everyone can be a model and feel the fierce. The attraction will have interactive entertainment, curated retail, and levels to undertake a transformational journey. The park is named after Banks' book trilogy and will be open at the end of this year. So Josie, tell me, I'm gonna give the camera my best smize. Ready? Oh gosh. Three, two. <laughs> That was beautiful. Yeah. You nailed it. I can, I can get it at Model Land. I, I can work on my try, modeling. I mean, maybe I can go there and get it as a museum. I know, I'm so excited. <laughs>
That'll be interesting for sure. Well, a new lead in the lineup for the Lakers. And ace and attack. Pepperdine men's volleyball set to take on two opponents. Details on the at-home matches. And looking for love? How to have a sweet Valentine's Day here in Malibu. The holiday specials in today's Around the Town Tuesday. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. As it turns out, we have very similar personalities. And this cat makes me make art because he's always motivating me to take pictures of him, to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. It's just that simple. Well, he's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Start a story. Adopt at the shelterpetproject.org. Despite setbacks from the Woolsey Fire for the third year in a row, Calabasas High School wins big in the smart category. Yesterday, the high school took, took first place in the Ventura County Academic Decathlon and won the Super Quiz portion as well. The competition featured questions about the 1960s. The team will now head to Sacramento for the statewide decathlon next month. world others are really succeeding in the sports world especially yeah. here at Pepperdine the men's volleyball team is doing good yeah. yeah they're doing really well they're actually ranked fifth in the nation right now and Pepperdine's men's volleyball will face off against BYU and Stanford this week mm -hmm. the waves will play BYU is ranked seventh in the nation tomorrow and then take on Stanford on Friday the waves are six and two this season and currently ranked number five in the nation this week is critical for the waves this will be their last two matches at home for a month. The Waves are undefeated at home and will look to remain so this week. The Los Angeles Lakers are pulling out of the trade talks for the New Orleans Pelicans superstar Anthony Davis. The Lakers willing, are willing to trade two more players to the original package of Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram and Kyle Kuzma along with the two first round picks. But after Pelicans asked for six to eight more draft picks, the Lakers refused to meet such demands. Currently, the Lakers are waiting on a counter offer from Pelicans before Thursday's trade deadline. The New England Patriots returned home today to celebrate the Super Bowl victory. An estimated 1.5 million fans packed into Boston to celebrate. There were people as far as I could see along the two-mile parade route. Patriots quarterback Tom Brady is now the only player in the NFL history with six Super Bowl victories. Sunday's game was also the lowest scoring game in the Super Bowl history, a 13-3 Patriots triumph over the Los Angeles Rams. If you guys look at that video of, you know, all those fans, over a million, welcoming them back in Boston and think, that could have been us. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Like I was, I was rooting for Rams just because I could, just because I can go to LA and right. watch the parade. You know. Yeah, it was a, it was quite a game. I don't know. It was 
very anticlimactic at moments. Yeah, I, I fell asleep. Yeah, yeah I, mean, <laughs> I woke game, up just in time for Maroon 5. The game was really <laughs> tight until the third quarter, but then there was the first touchdown and the only touchdown of the game in the fourth quarter. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Brady for the Slow win. Slow and steady wins and the race. <laughs> but uh, honestly, Absolutely. the Lakers, that today happening, surprising everybody. I know yeah. my boyfriend was personally very upset about Lonzo Ball leaving. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I know a lot of people are relieved Absolutely. that we're keeping that team. Yeah, I didn't want Kyle Kuzma to leave too, but but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing that Lakers are, are stopping like where they need to stop and not going all in for Anthony Davis. Yeah, and I mean, it's good also that we have LeBron back. Oh, exactly. we're doing yeah. so bad without him. Yeah. So yeah. maybe it's looking up. We're keeping our players. LeBron is Absolutely. back. Everyone we're not leaving to New Orleans. Too, so. so maybe. Yeah. Let's see, see how, it yeah, how it turns out. It's, it's, it's going to take a long time for LeBron to teach the kids how to go about it. You yeah. Know? yeah, we're willing yeah. to learn, though. Yeah, we we got to win. Absolutely, All absolutely. right, thank you, thank so, you much, so much, Dave. You're welcome, guys. Music's big night is Saturday, and the country music legend um, is making a big return to the Grammy stage. And life's camera action. Pepperdine holds their annual film festival, and one film takes home all the top awards. And sweet dining and shopping deals. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and we have the best places to spend your special night in this week's Around the Town Tuesday. Stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Newsleys. I'm Jenna Ray, and this is Around the Town Tuesdays, where we'll show you what's new in Malibu. Valentine's Day is coming up next week, and we're going to take a look at some of the best places in Malibu to plan your special night. The most romantic night of the year is less than 10 days away, and what better place to be in than a town on the water? Malibu restaurants have been preparing special Valentine's Day menus for the occasion. First up, Moon Shadows. This restaurant is offering a three-course dinner with candles and moonlight at 4 p.m., 6 p.m., and 8.15 p.m. on February 14th. The price is $89 per person and includes a live DJ. The famous Nobu restaurant should also be on the list. Although the price comes in at an expensive $200 per person, Nobu is offering a six-course chef-selected menu. The Carbon Beach Club at Malibu Beach Inn is serving Valentine's dinner for $75 or $115 with a wine pairing. Located in the other direction on PCH is the Sunset Restaurant. Their special menu is available from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Jeffries is the fifth restaurant on our list with a brunch menu for $68 and a dinner menu for $125. Last but not least, be sure to check out Diane Crom Chocolatier in the Malibu Country Mart before Valentine's Day. 
The locally made chocolate is a one-of-a-kind gift for your loved one. I love um, making people happy and just coming into the shop and getting a sample usually makes people happy, maybe turns their day around. The chocolatier reminds us of the true message of this holiday. Show someone some love, even if it's not chocolate, show someone some kindness. I like that. I love that. That's great. Because yeah. I can show kindness rather than drop a hundred bucks on a dinner. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. But those dinners looked pretty nice. Yeah. I would, I would love to experience it. At, at least some point in my life. Yeah, eventually. But we'll do it with the chocolate for now. Yeah, we'll do with <laughs> that as broke college students. Exactly. So we have Annabelle here to talk about entertainment. Yes. Big yes. Pepperdine news for film. Absolutely. Such Real big stories. news. It was so cool to be at um, the Real Stories Film Festival and see all of the filmmakers. They were just enjoying their night on the purple yeah, carpet. Yeah, they own it. Everyone's dressed up. There's it's a ice super sculptures, great event mocktails. Yes. It. It's a big Pepperdine, a true Pepperdine Absolutely. event. Mm -hmm. So Pepperdine community celebrated the power of storytelling on Friday at the annual Real Stories Film Festival, and one film stole the show. The best picture goes to the film Focus. <laughs> The film Focus swept all four awards at Pepperdine's 10th annual Real Stories Film Festival. Best Picture, Audience Choice, Best Editing, and Best Cinematography. You got a full scholarship, full tuition, movie boy is not cheap. Focus follows a college student who struggles with balancing the pressures of school as his family is being evicted. Director Ifani Ezieme says he made the film to give voice to students who face financial and academic difficulties on a daily basis. So um, I just really want to tell the story of those groups of students who, like, have to know that they're being heard, you know? And that, like, we, we just got to work together and make sure that everybody feels wel welcome wherever they're at. Actor Juan Barajas shares the hope that Focus will shine a light on some of these problems. It gives a microphone to the voices that sometimes are heard here on campus. I think uh, this film is just so amazing and it really just captures the reality sometimes that sometimes people don't see, it, you know. Pepperdine students in attendance also praised the film and voiced their support. Because it was relating a lot more to the issue of college students, um, I've just found it more relatable on a personal level. For more information about the festival, you can visit the following website at www.realstoriesfilmfestival.com. And Dolly Parton will be performing at the Grammys this Saturday for the first time in 18 years. Parton has been named this year's Music Cares Person of the Year for her charity work. The singer has a nonprofit organization called the Dollywood Foundation. The Recording Academy announced today that there will be a special tribute to Parton at this year's Grammy Awards, where Parton will sing songs from her hit album, Dumplin'. Other artists like Maren Morris, Casey Musgraves, and Katy Perry will also be featured singing her classic hits. Grammy-nominated rapper 21 Savage may be deported from the United States. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement arrested the rapper Sunday morning and says he is a U.K. resident in the U.S. illegally. ICE says he entered the U.S. legally in 2005 but became illegal when he did not leave the U.S. when his visa expired in the next year. The arrest came as a shock to fans because the rapper has long claimed to be an Atlanta native. So this is a pretty big surprise and there's a lot of people talking about this right now. Yeah, when I first heard about it, I was I was so confused just because I totally thought that he was from Atlanta and I thought it was all just kind of like made up that he was from England. But I am really enjoying all the tweets. Lots and of the, Twitter the memes. It's, it's really funny, so I'm kind of be sad when it's gone, but hopefully it gets all worked out. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of his fans are disappointed to see that, so. Definitely. And I'm excited for Dolly Parton with the Grammy. Absolutely. Better news, yeah. Yes. So, so exciting to hear about that. Definitely. So. Thank you so much, Thank Annabelle. You. Thank you. Well, happy Chinese New Year. It's the year of the pig, and people are ready to pig out and celebrate. Everyone around the world is celebrating, from Sydney to Hong Kong to China. Chinese New Year, also known as the Spring Festival, is honoring the year of the pig in the lunar year, which means 12 full cycles of the moon. You can even celebrate the Lunar New Year at the Santa Monica Pier, which has a 90-foot pig made of almost 200,000 LED lights on the famous Ferris wheel, but it's up right now and it's not dark enough outside to see the pig. But if you can look and see it on the pier tonight, it's huge. I can't wait to see it. That's super exciting. Just a pink pig. We love that. Well, that will do it for us this evening.
Have a good night. Have we'll a good see night. You on we'll Thursday. see you on Thursday.